Cancer. Hello, Cancer. This is your forecast for September 2013, and we have a new month ahead of us. And I have to say that uh, you Cancerians, you were the ones topping the list of private readings here <laughs> last month, or these last months, should I say. I mean, I can uh, even know that it's a Cancerian before I even check your birth dates, just by the sheer questions coming from you. So you're as a group, you're transforming here, you're following this new river that's taking place within your spirit and in your mind. And yes, as we shed those old layers, it's a little bit of a ride, isn't it? Uh, but then at the same time, this liberation that's coming to the forefront as we peel away the old, it's, it's really invigorating. And uh, it's good to hear some of you now are starting to feel the rush of hope and the rush of renewal and yes you are a crab you know and you're kind of changing inner houses now meaning that you know you're getting new shell new layers and uh, I'm really excited for you because last month you were crunching a whole lot of numbers you know the sun was in your second house which it still will be here for uh, much part of August still and uh, looking at your finances and how you can start making more money, attracting more money, just by the pure, you know, law of attraction. What will work for you? And uh, I think this is a great time. It's the time of the year for you guys to focus on this. If you're still on the August side of uh, listening to this video, uh, so put your attention there because as the sun moves th through the other sectors of your chart, you won't be able to have the same focus that you do right now in August. Coming into September, your shift, your son is moving into the third house and that will um, put more communication, you know, on the bandwidth for you. How you communicate, what you communicate, uh, there might also be an antsiness to kind of get up and out and about a little bit. So road trips could uh, be an important thing, you know, a nice fun thing too, uh, to do just to have a little change of scenery. And uh, the new moon is also going to be in this area of uh, third house, and that will be on September 5th. Great time for you guys to, to create your uh, monthly affirmation in this specific area, and uh, the clarity that should be coming here, uh, since Mercury is not only in the third house, it rules the third house, it's in the sign of Virgo, which Mercury is the, um, the ruler. So. It's really a point specific thing that you can ask for and that is to program your mind to not overthink. Um, it, it's good to think things through. Yes, you do need to have the overview. We all do. But what you can actually now put to the universe is saying, I'm stopping. I'm going to stop to worry. I'm stopping worrying now <laughs> okay because your mind can get a little overactive it kind of goes over and over round and round and that's something that you can let go of it's time for you guys to, instead of thinking your way through life and situations it's time for you to connect now deeper with your gut feeling your intuition and feel your way through life see and then you won't feel lost you won't feel that same level of stress because when you, you feel your way, you can only get two answers, whether something feels good or bad, whether it's a yes or no, should I or shouldn't I do it, yes or no. See, so you don't have to keep worrying and turning everything around in your mind because you can ask your mind any one question and get a thousand solutions. And there you are, what do I do, where do I go, how do I choose, right? So out of your mind, into your heart and your heart will always guide you because that's the seat of spirit and your spirit guides so you know you can start waving goodbye to all those worries and this is where um, Uranus the power of Uranus is helping you also to change this wheel you know we've talked about this square between Uranus and Pluto and what is breaking away and most of your worries you know these days and has been for this you know later past period over the last year, a year and a half, 
is um, between your partnerships and your career. You know, not saying that there isn't other areas, but the Pluto in the seventh house for you, that is your significant other. That is your love life, right? And yes, there's challenges. There's things there that just seems very difficult to deal with. And then all of the uncertainty that has come around when Uranus moved into your career house with all these unexpected twists and turns, uh, sure, that gives, you know, a whole bag load of things to worry about. But don't think, just feel. Then you're tuning into the element you are in your water elements, okay? So you're supposed to sense, feel. And this is also a part of this newness with you where you're opening up for more of your own natural sense of intuitiveness uh, and your own inner psychic abilities, that's gonna grow like this over these next coming years. That's the upside of the challenges you're going through now, okay? So there's always an upside to things. Then we have um, the Venus fourth house family this month is gonna be important to you, you know, your children, your parents and so forth. And, how you share with them and wanting to share with them and some of them are uh, going to be leaving and this is as far as your children you know going off to college uh, so it's a grand time to that, that Venus should be here right now so you can give that extra love and attention to them and then we have Jupiter uh, first house so you're still expanding uh, Cancerians you're going to have this until uh, summer of next year and uh, I sense that there's a lot more that you're feeling now is coming up to that surface. Uh, things that have been laying a little bit more, uh, you know, on the subconscious level, you're starting to see it now. You're starting to feel it now. You're starting to trust it. And I think that is what you've been waiting for, to get to that point that you can trust the good that has started to kind of really show up in your life. That Saturn is still in the fifth, so you still have those challenges that we've been speaking about these last few months, uh, where you might feel that things are still being held back, or you're kind of being boggled down, or your creative energies are kind of the, just withered, <laughs> you know, hard to kind of express them because it's in the house of self-expression and creativity, and Saturn just won't allow you to do it. You know, it's holding you back, but that's only for now. So if it can't come out, where do you think all that self-expression is going? It's got to go somewhere. If it can't come out beyond those rings, where is it going? It's going inwards. That's where you need to work right now. There will be a time when all this happy-go-lucky joyfulness of yours will come out to play again. But, but Saturn is helping you look within. Why? Because it's a deep cleansing time when we we're talking about this on our private readings as well, that, that Scorpio is, is looking into those cells, kind of like a surgeon, you know, with a laser light, cutting away those things that no longer behoove you, things that have perhaps been very important to you, you know, through life and, and at certain parts of your life, but which no longer allows you to grow. Well, we're pruning, you know, Saturn's pruning those things so you can grow even larger now in the aftermath. And this is also part of the liberation that's taking place and where you're going to see, uh, especially in the career field too, once we're out of this tight square here with Pluto from Uranus and Uranus can kind of liberate, you will start feeling how this new Saturnian energy has given you a, a stronger much more solid foundation um, where you can trust yourself and uh, really feel confident in this new field that you will be growing into over the years coming in. So I'm not going to spend too much time there on Neptune and Pluto. We've talked about that, uh, you know, these last months. I'll tune into them next month. I would rather now just talk a little bit about what's coming up here more on the activity level for you here. Uh, this month. We have Mars too. Uh, you know, you had the sun crunching through numbers here last month. Mars is still doing it for a reason though. Uh, I see you kind of wanting to figure out what kind of budgets you're going to have uh, and you're looking at um, how to use that money and what to use that money on. And Mars being in, uh, going through Leo right now, it's like I'm seeing how you're wanting to 
use or spend some money on yourself. Uh, second house is not just money, but it, it's those things we value and, and sense of self, sense of self-worth. And Mars right now is saying, well, I want to do this for me. <laughs> I want to do this because I deserve it. It's the I am energy, that Leon, Leonian, <laughs> the Leo <laughs> energy of Mars. is saying, I deserve. So Mars is going to be putting that forward. So whatever it is you want to go out and renew for yourself, whether it's a new hairdo or new shoes or whatever it is that makes you feel good, because that's what it's all about in this position, something that feels a little bit like quality and luxury, absolutely and then go for it, you know. Cancerians, you so deserve it because you're so giving and so generous out to everybody else and the family that, you know, it's easy for you to forget about your own needs, but I think Jupiter is helping you to kind of expand that now. Um, the persona, you know, it's the first house, all about the persona. So let's take a look at what's going on here at the top of the month. We start out this uh, month with uh, Pluto and Sun uh, trying, so it's really doing the thing here where you're going to feel that something will be surfacing and cutting through and giving you a sense of accomplishment, very powerfully so. And this might be these first few things coming in because we've had that uh, golden triangle, you know, from the very end of July there throughout August here, um, that you will start seeing that these hopes and dreams are starting to do something. Uh, you know, this might be one of the first locks opening up September 1st. Then we have the new moon here on the 5th uh, of September, and we mentioned that a little bit earlier. It's all about now uh, affirming to um, communicate, uh, I won't say just more, but communicate perhaps differently, uh, where you uh, can let go of your worries, okay? That's the greatest gift I can give you guys. So you don't over-worry for nothing. That, that's just like a whole lot of waste of energy. Go with your sensing feeling, learn how to communicate in a new way, and that goes through your moon, and the moon is your ruler, you know? So you guys should be perfect at it. It's just that it trips you up when your communication house is in Virgo. And right now here this month, you know, Mercury is in Virgo, so you got a little double on that. It's gonna look better though, considering then we have uh, Mercury is going to move out of this area into uh, Libra, into the home, and this will be around the uh, 8th, yes, around the 8th. So you'll see that communication with family members may start picking up here uh, throughout the rest of that month. And we have Mars square Saturn, so we've got a little to do here on, on the 9th. Mars may not be all that happy, there is a square between your second house and your fifth house, so it might be extra expenses going out to one of the children, perhaps, and uh, that might take a little portion out of the money you had thought you were gonna spend on yourself, right? <laughs> that you felt you deserved, and then boom, here is a need coming out of the fifth house. So that could be either children, it rules the house of children, it could be also in some kind of a creative project perhaps uh, that is going to uh, need something more from you than you had expected. But it's a passing uh, aspect and so it's not going to linger. Then we have Venus and Neptune, a very romantic uh, type energy here or where we're connecting with hopes and dreams and those things that we love. And for you that will be all be about being uh, between your um, fifth and your ninth house. So. Anything creative, fun-loving, uh, fifth house is all about those things uh, that we love to do when we have time, you know, uh, creative projects as well. So that would be a great day to go out, schedule in to do something that is pleasurable. Then we have a, a little uh, misunderstanding coming in here around the 14th, and uh, Pluto and, and Mercury might butt heads a little bit might not be totally in agreement, there might be a reaction, especially to those things that have been kind of like percolating and building up and then if they haven't been expressed prior to the 14th, well, they will come out. And then it might come very unexpectedly because on the same day we have uh, Mars and Uranus and, uh, you know, Mars is very fiery and uh, 
Uh, Uranus is uh, always very unexpected energies that can pop anything on you at any time, uh, for better or worse, Uranus doesn't care. But it's like, okay, if Mercury and Pluto is going to come in here with this quake energy, it's like, well, there might be a sunny sky and then there's one little black cloud right there and then there's going to be a cloud burst. But that's quickly passing. We have on the 18th uh, Venus and Saturn, and so for you that will be uh, between your fifth house and, uh, yes, it is in your fifth house, sorry. Uh, it, it's by conjunct, so this is a day where you can have a serious uh, discussion. It could be a serious lease that needs to be signed or anything, money uh, talks on this day. Could be good, okay, because it's going to be grounding it, and it's grounding it in an area where uh, that rules like projects, so if you have anything new, fantastic time to get that done and have it secured for the long haul. And uh, even matters of the heart might be a little bit more serious here on this day because Saturn kind of sobers us up, but it's still in the fifth house of playful Leo, so it doesn't have to be a bad thing, just a little somber day perhaps. Then we have Pluto moving directly, and this is, uh, I think, good news for you because Pluto has been uh, retrograde for uh, several months, and it's in your house of committed relationships, partnerships, marriage, and Pluto is that point of transformation. Uh, those of you who have good aspects to your Pluto will be happy for this because now you can move forward and start transforming that relationship and bring some more of that passion back in that might have felt like it's been a little switched off. For those of you who have personal planets kind of coming up towards this Pluto here by squares or oppositions, you know, those difficult aspects, well, you can expect things now to really start moving along uh, along these lines. And yes, now you can start working with things that might have been laying low for some time. But, but here we go, you know, it's going to start picking up speed and uh, you'll see that and how that's going to unfold over these next few months. We have a healing day on the 20th. It's, it's just, you know, maybe some nice sweet words coming in from a loved one or friends or whoever it is. It's just a heartfelt warm day. And then we have a karmic point on the 25th where Saturn and the moon node are going to uh, meet up and that is always at a point when uh, something that we're working for will come to the forefront, not saying necessarily a conclusion on, on something you've worked for, um, but, but um, a sign or some news that you are on the right path uh, of where you're wanting to get your ambitions up and running for you. Once again, it's in this house of um, projects. And the end of the month is really nice here. Cancerians, we've got Venus and Pluto. No, Venus and Jupiter, they're expanding. They are harmonizing. Jupiter wants just to have fun, to hang loose. It's your first house. You might feel like wanting to go away somewhere. Venus is all for it uh, and will be very, um, what would I say, uh, spontaneous. So you might see what you're going to end up doing here end of the month. And it would definitely be a great time to get away for a day or two if you can. It will recharge your batteries. Those of you who are single, well, you might even might find a new love here on this day. So pretty much this is what we have, Cancerians. We get the full moon on the 19th, so I'll add that in. And for you, that will be in the ninth house. That is for higher consciousness. It's for those uh, goals that we're reaching for, the truth of your heart that you have have been expressing uh, and will continue to, to express and you'll see how you can start harvesting this and getting respect from those around you now because you are holding the power of truth within yourself, in your heart, your spirit and mind. So good for you. Well this is pretty much what I have here uh, for you. Listen to your uh, moon signs and rising signs, and I'll see you again next month, Cancers. Bye-bye.